Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today, we are going to take a look at Frank Cho. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I actually picked Frank's work today. Um, one of the main ones is um, I do r reviews and um, lesson tiers on uh, my Patreon. It's not a plug for Patreon, but it it's, will make a point. Most of the people that I review their work and and give uh, lessons to, the one thing that they could really benefit from is just streamlining um, the overall way that they build forms and stuff like that. And, and I think I started kind of running through, in my mind, different artists that I thought had a high level of skill, and yet their work wasn't completely inundated with... Um, style uh a, a lot of um i don't know if you want to call it unnecessary detail frank will render um his ballpoint pen pieces quite a bit but but frank's stuff is very solid and it's it's pretty straightforward and i think um it just exemplifies um at least a good foundation for drawing so uh yeah i thought it would be fun to uh take a look at his art and kind of we'll dissect it a little bit so anyway welcome to super fun sunday what's it gonna be it's gonna be super fun <laughs> all right so uh i'm i might have to stop this video unfortunately if i get i'm waiting for an email and if i get it i'm gonna have to split but um so these are some paintings that he's doing we won't focus on um too much of that but but anatomically speaking if you look at a person like frank his stuff is real consistent. Uh, the way that he lights form and stuff like that. I mean, he's got kind of two deliveries, in my opinion. There's there's more to it than that because he's a real good uh, cartoonist. He's he's does comic art. He does illustration. He clearly does paintings too. But the way that he builds his forms, um, I mean, I'm just looking at this right here. This is so Frank Cho. It's like he's got the three muscles here and this. You know, it's it's like. Sometimes when you find artists that are really good, they really kind of blur the lines of, of patterns and stuff like that that they use. Um, but uh, yeah, I, f I find Frank to be very um, readable. You know, it's like the abs are here. There's not a lot of torque in this pose. He's, he's kind of just going straight back and leaning back a little bit. But, um, you know, it's a good way to learn... Um, anatomy and figure drawing and get your stuff solid he's real good with clothes too um which is another thing that i see people struggling with quite often and, and so um you know again i think he's someone really good to look at uh not not that you need to learn from him like the way that he does specific things but but you could break down your own sort of approach to things using ideas that he uses um you know the amount of rendering and stuff like that. This is really nice. Really, really good. He's got this nice sort of like the material is bunching here and there's a little, uh, what do you want to call it? Like pocket and then it hangs down and it's just nicely done. You know, he's got really attractive lines that he uses for stuff and it's just solid. His work is always solid, simple lighting on it. You know, it's not nothing nuts. This is a nice painting. Again, we're not going to focus on paints. We'll look at more of the pencil drawings and like line stuff. And even the ballpoint pen pieces, I might kind of avoid those a little bit. So I think uh, it, it's, you know, another uh, application. To me, they look uh, maybe like they're more photo reference. This is nice, though. Again, I mean, you see like like the way that he draws the girl's bellies. It's pretty much all the same. He handles it the same. The way that he draws knees, I mean, it varies a little bit, but it's still the same basic idea. You can't say that about a lot of other artists. I mean, you you can, but I can think of so many examples of people that, like, every time you see them draw stuff, it's different. Um, the faces, you know, the way he approaches faces. We'll see more close-ups of faces, I'm sure. This is very nice. Again, just solid, clear stuff. There's no lighting on the armor here. There's no lighting on her legs. Um, it's just an attractive face. And again, he doesn't... There's not, at least in this particular piece, like, again, there's no torque to the thing. There's not this juxtaposition of the upper torso and the hips um, other than just sort of a smooth little curve. He does great, like, this kind of fabric, like... Um, 
capes and drapery and things like that. And his monsters are always cool too. You know, he does good animals and beasts. And uh, this is Deja Thoris. He moved these apart more. You know, you've got your shoulders over here and the hips over here. Nice feet. You know, really, really good feet. That's a nice hand. Um, it's a good piece. Simple lighting on the hair. Just little, just little bits of light hitting it. This is nice. But yeah, there was what was funny is there was multiple artists that I was thinking about, um, not to do a super fun Sunday, but that that I'm trying to help with their work, and it was like the one thing they all had in common is that they needed like a Frank Cho in their life. <laughs> so I didn't know it at the time, but I was just I kept trying to think of like I was like, what like what are these different artists lacking? And it's just it's it's. Frank has got such a solid understanding of the fundamentals, and then he just puts these different table dressings on top of it, you know? It's a solid, straightforward drawing, and then with style on it. This is cute. Again, simple belly. You know, there is well, there is lighting on her glove here. I mean, I, I'm assuming that he colored this piece, too. I don't know that for a fact, but um, the colors are really nice. You know, it's it's real real nice, actually. And I like this little kind of dapple of that, like, kind of pinkish red color on the just the canvas itself. Um, all, all of it just looks real good. The way that he did Ivy's skin is really, really cool. And that's nice, too. very simple weapon you know that that is just it's about as detailed as it needed to be to get the point across that it's a gun without you know again there's really no lighting on it he did i don't know if he colored this but i mean uh, there's no lighting on the line drawing really it's a little bit of like a core shadow right there but other than that nothing on it's lit um, a little hard to see on this gun, but it looks like he might have put a little bit of black on some of these areas, but, you know, and again, no lighting on the figure. I mean, it's smart. If you, if you, if you really can't blast through like lighting forms real well, then you might be in your benefit to just leave it out. And this is actually more detailed than some of the other stuff that we've seen. And the hair is real nice. Um, you know, it's, it's catching a lot of light across this middle and then these pieces, but, uh, you know, nice hand, solid. And again, the clothes. He's just got. He just knows how to suggest those the chunks of fabric. And uh, this is nice. This bunching down here and all that. This is real good. This is cool. Again, I mean, look at the lighting on Batman. It's so straightforward. It's just one big shadow that gets all these, like this, the, these planes, and then this little pocket with the eye and stuff like that. And on on Deadpool, what I noticed, because that other piece I think was Deadpool, one of the first ones we looked at, is he just hits, he hits like a nice highlight, like right here. There's a little bit of a light hitting the rim of his mask there, but... You know, sometimes the temptation is, you know, people don't know when to stop with the detail. We were looking at some stuff the other day, and I was saying that it was incredible to watch the, the, the artist work through his ideas and ultimately, like, wind up with what he left in and what he left out. But with Cho, I, I feel like it's, it's a little more... Um, he'll err on the side of just the most direct stuff, which looks great. There's no right or wrong. Whatever you feel most comfortable with, you know, is what you should try. This is cool. Nice forms here. Cool anatomy. This is nice. Wow, that's really cool. That is awesome. Man, that is so cool looking. It looks like he used... I'm getting like warm and gray markers on this, but man, that looks really cool. This this area in here looks great. The like, you see those like striations of muscles he sort of 
put in there with the patterns that he used. It's like some of it looks like happy accidents, but some of it you can definitely see that he did like strokes. But man, that is really cool. This is great. Again, this is getting more detailed. This is what I'm talking about. Artists that do a lot of stuff like this, though. This stuff is really tricky to learn from because it's like, where do you get your footing if you're trying to learn how to draw an arm? And and this is sort of like the patterns that you're trying to remember. It's very abstract and kind of complex. But when you see the simple forms, it's a little easier to uh, build out from there. This is nice. Really, really cool sketch. Man, that is really, really cool, actually. Super nice. His women are thick. They're, they're, they're very, very... Um, there's a weight to their bodies, like the thickness of the limbs and stuff like that. Again, very, very straightforward landmarks that he shows to suggest the anatomy. It's just, you know, really good. And, you know, with a piece like that, I mean, it does definitely help expedite the amount of time that you're going to spend on it. Where's the value? Where's the time and the value, the budget, you know, which is your time when you're an artist, is spent on the ideas. You know, it's the execution of this pose more than, um, you know, he spent... 40 minutes thinking of it and then he just renders like a really kind of like maybe not as cool drawing for eight hours it's nice see these get way more detail but this stuff to me is probably photo reference which is where he's getting the more sort of subtle values so um you know again we won't focus on those as much but you could definitely check those out on his instagram and get the feels for for that this is nice We'll look at like one of those like really super detailed ballpoint drawings. I'll point out what I notice in it, but I just don't want to get stuck on those. This is cool. But this isn't really lit. Like the the Copic application on this guy's armor isn't really identifying too much of the light sources it's a little bit in there but uh, he definitely could have played it up more with the values he could have had lighter stuff and darker stuff but that's just almost like he just put it on it this is cool yeah man that's a really really powerful wonder woman she looks like she could knock someone out man nice intense face I did a lot of pieces like this, or is it the same one? I'm just seeing it multiple times. I'm, I'm when I'm shooting videos, sometimes I don't soak in everything as uh, in detail as I should. This is cool. Nice hand. This is good too. Again, nice suggested folds, but it works. It's like you know, nothing is going a weird direction that's making it look too funky. This is really nice. He does great beasts, man these like just the suggestion of these like dragon heads or whatever they are little demon heads it's really really cool yeah it's so great really nice forms here too just feel the wrapping of everything this is a great pose would be cool to see this in black and white because he did actually more traditional comic lighting on it this is nice if you notice, he kind of he generally tends to light the hair over like one area. So, even though you have these white strands, he picks like one sort of um, high point where the light's hitting it, and it, the light just kind of falls across it. And then, as this chunk of hair is sweeping down, the light is going through this little area too. But that's nice; it works good. This is good. You can see there's his light area of the hair, and it's hitting here. And then he might, you know, throw a little bit of light on these pieces that are starting to curve back up. Because what would happen is you have this form here, but it's it's a the plane is facing that way. So when this hair starts to curve down this way, it's going to go into the dark. As it starts to curve back up and around, light is going to fall over there. Because what's it doing? It's hitting this, and it would hit this. So if you can think of stuff like that, it'll definitely help you. 
This is nice. This is really cool. Man, that's awesome. Really solid. But you know, something like this, you pull up reference and uh, there's plenty of military reference. You can get these nice thick folds and the the, the um, different material folds differently depending on the thickness and the, the slickness of it and texture. This is nice. Oh, so he, it was funny because he ended up darkening this area, but then he had the light actually hitting here. It's still got a little bit of light hitting there, but you can see he did sort of follow what I was mentioning, which is as the hair starts to turn around this way that it, this is cool. Really nice, actually, man. This looks like a very labor intensive piece. Lots of fabric here. Where is this again? Oh, so he went with uh, kind of the Franklin Booth style like line work on this, which is cool. I would speculate that probably when he does pieces like this, if he's going to go this route with like this sort of like vintagey looking fabric, that he's got some of his old you know art books out that have this kind of you know women and the the drapery and stuff like that, or, or maybe he's photo referenced a little bit, but. That'll help you get through the problem solving on this, like the wraps and stuff like that. He draws good enough to be able to, you know, make a little bit of reference go a long way. So it's cool. The wings and stuff look nice. This is cool. He keeps the stuff so straightforward. It's really interesting. There he is at the desk. That's a complicated drawing. It's fairly big, too. Dude, he could sell that piece for so much. Oh my god. That's nice. Man, that's really cool. It's interesting too because he sticks with his type like like almost, you know, I would think of Harlequin versus his Wonder Woman as Harlequin might be like more sort of thin and a little more sort of like, you know, a different thing but he he tends to stick with that very um like they really have like guns and stuff like that this is nice yeah that's really good For stuff like this, it's it's like you have to just kind of build up to it. I mean, you could definitely go for something like this, but I think if you're if you're at the earlier stages of like learning, trying to work with this many sort of patterns of fabric um, might be kind of hard. My recommendation, if you wanted to study something like this, would be kick it into Photoshop or get a piece of tracing paper and just try to find the big chunks. Don't look at the the, the detailed lines. Just look at the the major planes, like the masses. Like, do you see this is a piece of fabric and it folds over, and there's a piece of fabric and it folds over? If you can locate those, that will help you see the whole thing. And there's parts of this that get a little surreal. But, um, you know, if you have enough solid stuff down, then it won't just look like you completely went off the rails and did a bunch of weird stuff. This is good. Thick fabric. Man, you can tell that cape is thick. You see the thickness of these pieces? That's funny. <laughs> so he's using a 0.7. That's thick lead. This is nice. And again, just find those big pieces. And don't look at all these extra lines that are on everything. Yeah, that's really good. And again, just so like his hand, like the figure is so simple. Yeah, 
that's good. So hopefully this helps people. I, I, I really did feel like that this would be something pretty beneficial for people to check out. He's real good, though. You know, and that's the bottom line. This is someone that's been drawing for probably 30, 35 years. So it's like he's got a lot of drawings under his belt to, to make it look this simple. But, but if you can try to learn in a way where your stuff is foundationally strong, then you can rip it out. The thing is, is if you if you have this kind of solidity just in your, your toolbox, he could draw this stuff really loose and put splatter on it and it would give it a completely different vibe. He doesn't choose to go that route, but it, it's like if if instead of taking 90 minutes to draw this piece, he did the drawing in like 15 minutes and then just took a brush pen and did the blacks and again threw some splatter on it. It looked like a totally different artist, but it's so solid. That's where he wins, you know. But it's solid because he understands his forms. This is nice. That's really good too. Yeah. God dang. Yeah, it's crazy. He's really, really consistent with his faces. That's cool. He does really he does really good like the foundational basis of his like little monsters and trolls and stuff like that. That's great. This is really good. Again, really just masterfully done. Hey, what are you doing? Stop. No fighting. I know you guys love YouTube and you love to fight when I'm on YouTube. This is interesting. I'm, I'm assuming this is on one piece. and He may have superimposed it himself, but let's see. I don't. That's funny. I'm I'm inking Justice League right now, so I've been doing her shield a lot. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <coughs> Looks a little like Linda Carter in the face, but man, <laughs> I'm not even that buff. <laughs> Holy cow! Jeez, Louise, that is a back. This one arm is huge. Dang. <laughs> it is beautifully rendered. It's 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 he he does this really really well. Sometimes it looks a little tiny bit overblown to me. I've definitely seen pieces where it's just like lines everywhere, but this is actually really really like nice and and looks I think still pretty aesthetically cool. This is real nice. That's really good. Whoo. Yeah, that is nice. God dang, that is such a good sketch. Wow. So he ended up painting that, looks like? Interesting. Oh, the prints. I wonder. I wonder if he hand painted it. Man, she's thick too. This is nice. I think that San Diego. Yeah, I think that's San Diego. I know the sketches are from San Diego. I just wasn't 100% sure if downtown was. This is nice. I actually like that he gave her a much more thin abdomen. I think it looks good. And this arm is really popping right here. This is nice. Drawing like this, though, the one thing that it just occurred to me is it does leave you very, very exposed. Like, if you don't have your stuff solid and you don't understand, like, proportions and stuff like that, it, you, this doesn't give you anywhere to hide. So, in a way, it, 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 it's a quite brave style to have, too, because a lot of stuff has to be pretty accurate or it's going to look weird. This is cool. <sighs> <laughs> so one thing that I notice when he does these drawings is he gets his values real good. Sometimes the direction of the lines in terms of like, because he's just re rendering for value, 
like he'll have lines going every direction so it can be a little deceiving to to maybe someone trying to learn from it because you'll find out real fast if you start just putting like lines in any sort of random direction to get fades <clears throat> it, it can start to make your uh, actual forms look weird but because his 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 overall value ranges where they're placed works uh, it, it's definitely more forgiving but just directionally speaking uh, like if I'm gonna render something I'm not talking about comic book rendering but like my more my black drawing thing it, it's like I am trying to send it over form and even if I do layers and layers of lines I'm still trying to find patterns that create that three-dimensional feel on top of that the values have to work but if he just started throwing like lines just in any direction like in the eye socket and stuff like that like he has straight up and down on this area right here that's risky if those were too dark it would start to look really really weird because this is uh it curves like like um like an ellipse like if you had a beach ball and you were trying to draw a line from the bottom or like a globe it goes up like that, but the socket starts to go back out and then back around. And having straight up and down lines on a plane that literally is like the inside of a cave that goes up <clears throat> can look weird. But again, because he keeps the values nice and light, uh, it's not as noticeable. But if you don't control your values as well as he does, um, then you'll just have weird looking lines on stuff. So form, form, form. And then you can play with it. I mean, that's that's a pretty good example of his foundation's so good, he can really do whatever he wants with it. This is really good. Oh, that's nice. Man, that is great. Always good with the beast. This is good. Again, very straight up and down. I mean, like, from the pit of this guy's neck to his crotch is pretty much a straight shot. I mean, he's... he's It's not flat by any means, but, you know, I mean, like, he could have he just as easily had it going like this and had this guy's hips over here and, you know, some leg kinked out going this way and the other back leg like this, but he keeps them pretty... pretty straight up and down. This is nice, though, the way he bent the knee. This this actually gives it some dynamics. And then also that arm up, uh, when you see it in the final drawing, it's actually got a little bit more torque to it. And this is really good. This works, though, for this type of drawing because I, I, I think... Um, you know, you this, this is very compelling, having them facing off like this. So it's a good call. And then the head position in the body I think is good this is really nice this is huge really cool hand and like this a lot uh, yeah he draws really cool dragons Wow <clears throat> that is really cool that's a big animal Wow, that is neat. That's a really good photo. I like it just because it's like you get to see this piece of art, which is really, really nice. And this is such a great page. And then it's like, oh, what's in the stack? Show us the stack. This is nice. But yeah, hopefully this is fun and, and, and uh, somewhat encouraging for people um, in terms of like, like uh, how you want to sort of approach... Um, you know, setting up, setting up your figures won't work for everyone though. You know, yeah, really cool. You can get your big round stick. And just do drawings like this all day. Easy peasy. <laughs> no. You can see on this piece though that he's more. There, there's he still he'll he'll occasionally throw in sets of lines that are a little weird. 
Because I mean, the, the anatomy here, like if you think of it as a wireframe, would go like this. So having lines going straight up and down on that form is just super risky. But again, it's such a light value that it doesn't become a distracting um, direction. And then because these values are so much darker, you don't even really notice it. But you have to control the values good. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. And I, I personally try to avoid stuff like this, like little boxes that are so apparent. But, it, you know, it works for him. But yeah, I mean, it's like... There's a pretty, like, it's almost like graph paper. You see, like, right in here, those little squares. Mm -hmm. Just got a text, sorry. This is cool. This is some of the more complicated lighting that I've actually seen him do on, like, a uh, comic book uh, face. Batman's got all the planes, man. It's like... For people that are in the lighting, like Batman's mask and face and stuff like that gives you a lot of opportunities to do fun lighting. Uh, on top of the fact that he's a dark character, this is nice. We'd seen the rough of this, but... This is really good, too. It's a little crooked, but it could be the shot, but he's drifting just a little. It's like this is lifting. He kind of evened it out here. It's funny. You see that? Yeah, balanced out more. <clears throat> and there's that Batman. That's cool. Whoa. That's nice. That's cool. I'd, I'd seen him talking about painting um, in some of his posts. Sorry, I got a text back real quick. Um, this is a really, really nice piece. This is great. The look on the, um, was it a T-Rex? Like, his face is awesome. <laughs> it's like going cross-eyed because she's so, like, low beneath him. Uh, but, man, this is all kick-ass. This is great. Her boobs. And, man, this is a killer, killer piece. Her face. The whole thing, it's really, really nice. I actually like that it's like a RGB colored scan, too, so you can see the um, the hue of the ink and stuff like that. It looks really cool. Man, that is so nice. That's This could be my favorite piece that we've seen so far. I think this is really, really good. This is cute. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, man. Oh, this is good, too. Wow. Damn. The angle of the head on this thing is great. Oh, this whole thing is, that's really, really good. So many talented artists we could do these videos for a hundred years, and I don't think we'd ever run out of awesomeness. It's cool. That's an interesting blend of uh, the Franklin Booth with, uh, or whatever, Joseph Clement Cole, whatever you want to call it, you know, whatever. And uh, the comic book stuff, it's nice. It's really good, too. His Wolverine is super solid. Like I've always, I've always thought he's. This is a great piece, man. You can, he looks very comfortable drawing these pieces. Like there's a level of um, spontaneity to like the face in particular. Like like, it, it just get the feeling that he like he did the rough and was like, oh, that's that's it. That's the gesture I want. And then he just was able to like keep it in. But yeah, there's some subtleties to this piece that um, make it really really exceptional. I'm not getting a real sense of weight with her holding this, but that would just be me more pointing that out. That that uh, I know she's obviously very strong to carry whatever it is, but yeah, it's. But this is all really, really powerful right here. This is cute. Big arms, man. He draws big arms. This is an oldie. This is nice. It's <laughs> cool. People are dying for me to say it. Serpieri. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Oh, it's interesting. He did lines through her hair. <laughs> Boo. a big painting I wonder if he ever finished it 
Oh boy. I'm assuming this is probably for a cover because I would never want to do a sequential book where you were rendering stuff this much. That would take forever. It's funny because it's it's when you see it like in this form, you know, obviously there's a lot of rendering on it, but the, the face actually is very simple. We'll have more and more life as he puts in more of the detail. Uh, dang, that's cool. Okay, we're going to start wrapping this up in a minute because I actually need to get to work. God dang, that is awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. It's a very human feel to this gorilla. Like, it's gorilla-ish, but it also is kind of human-ish. It's weird. I think what it is is his... It's almost like his chest and legs are a little more human than ape-like. It, it's like there's a proportional thing that feels a little off. I think, like, gorillas, there's, like... There's more... The space is used a little different here. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, it's got a little bit more of, like, a, like a human vibe. God dang, that's crazy. Go, Frank. Careful, buddy. That doesn't look safe. I, you know, wow, that's nuts. I wouldn't, I honestly, I wouldn't want to spend that much time on something like this painting. I would try to come up with it like something a little more flat. You're a brave man. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So he gritted this out so that he could transfer his drawing to the big board without it, um, uh, you know, like, like you, like you're not going to use a light box or something like this. And you could, in theory, project it. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, then you just would take your original sketch and uh, grid it out. So you measure the grids so they're squares. And then when you place it on the big canvas, as long as you kind of match up these landmarks, like this much piece of head is in here, a little bit pops out here, you're going to be able to place it in. And with a painting, because you go over it, you really ultimately end up losing the drawing. I think as line artists, we get very hung up on this. But, but um, you know... Once it's on the big canvas, you're going to keep going over it anyway. It's going to sort of, the painting is going to eventually consume the line art. Um, it's not like doing a coloring book. This is cool. This is nice. Reminds me a little of Carlos Deanda. <laughs> Carlos had sketchbooks full, full, filled with this guy, this type monster. Man, it's cool. Yeah, wow. Really, really neat. Oh, my gosh. And that's very exciting. Always cool to see your work on display. He looks very proud. This is nice. This is cool. This actually looks a little like a Serpieri drawing. It may be. Or that was, was that Druna? I don't know. Maybe it's just Frank. I have no idea. So he seems to stick with that 0 0.7 lead. It's interesting. I'm I'm right now I actually prefer just using regular pencils. So I I mean I buy like, you know, art art pencils, but but uh yeah, I I just actually use a sharpener and sharpen regular pencils, but I vary on the lead all the time and anything from 3H to about 3B. Just whichever pencil I use, that's cool. It's nice. Okay, we'll do like 10 more and then uh we'll end it. That's coming out nice. Man, that's that's a lot of work. It's a big piece. I'm curious how tight he went with that. This is nice too. That's cool. Yeah, wow. Really, really. Like it's cool that he draws backs like like uh like this way. It's it's really really neat. This is a great shot. Wow. You don't see a lot of people drawing dragons from this angle, especially like what well, looks like a big shot because of uh, how big the photo is of it. But uh, yeah, that's funny. It's like, man, we're really behind that dragon. It's cool. This is nice too with the head coming in. It's cool. This is nice. Again, those big, big, what I don't know, completes. This is nice. 
he's got his like little lines. It's cool. It's neat to see that, you know, it's smart. Honestly, I don't do that, and it's like sometimes I pay the price. Yep, really, really good. He's so talented, and just like obviously the amount of work that he's done has uh, amplified that. But yeah, oh, this he's using microns. It's so funny that so many pros use microns. Cause it's like, um, you know, I mean they're markers. Supposedly it's archival ink. We'll see. We'll see in the future, 400 years from now. <laughs> Sadly, we won't. None of us will know. I I do actually wonder though how um, Copics will age. So far, so good, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, you never know. Another five or ten years from now, Copics may start like the ink may break down, or some colors may sort of shift. It'll it'll be interesting to see. This is cool. It's almost got like a little bit of a Jeff Darrow vibe for some reason to me. I don't know. Yeah, this is nice. So consistent. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, that's nice. So you see the finished of them. Yeah, those are cool. Wow. Really nice. Dang. Oh, that's good. That's really, really good, actually. It'll be hard to draw. It's just such a little slice of life moment. Oh, that's cool. Um, we would seen that in the beginning. It's cool how he's putting in some of the value. Oh, this is nice. Art's really good. Yep. Dang. I didn't realize that he painted as much as that that he he does. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's cool seeing that piece. It's funny because oh, and the bat symbol and the I didn't notice that another one. I mean, it's, that's really cool. Oh, really cool piece. This is nice. Thick layer. Oh, how funny! <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I just got a text. What is this? Okay. All right, I gotta wrap this up. We'll go one more, and then I gotta uh, the email that I w was waiting for came through. So um, this is beautiful, though, man. That pose is so great, and this is awesome too. So hopefully that that was fun to check out, and uh, you know, hundred percent. I'll put links to Frank Cho uh, in the description box. Please follow him on Instagram if you don't already, and uh, yeah, you know, use some of this mindset in your own work and uh, have fun, man. That is great, boy. Oh boy. He has some cool dinosaurs, but uh, yeah, I think I think you can learn a lot from from what he's got going on, and and look how much fun he's having. This could be you. We'll we'll cut out his head and we'll put your face here, and this will be you in like five to ten years. You'll be painting, drawing comic books, doing fine art and illustration in your comics. It's gonna be all win. Just trust me on this. Just gotta keep plugging away at it. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.